Hello there. How are you doing today? God bless you. Hope you are doing well. I pray that the grace of God will continue to be with you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. By God's grace and by the help of the Holy Spirit, a uh, word of ex exhortation for today, by God's grace, is um, grace in the time of lawlessness. Amen. Grace in the time of lawlessness. My brothers and sisters, we are in the end time and things are really happening. Mm. Yes, things are really happening. We see a lot of lawlessness out there. People are going to court for a lot of um, social issues and they are being denied of their rights. Yes, their people are being forced against their will. It's so terrible that things are happening that um, years before now would have like, oh, that would never happen. But it's really happening right in our nose. The people that we voted for, the people that we trusted, oh, they are leaders. We pay taxes. We do this just for us to live at peace and to be able to make things go well. But these same people are now forcing things on us. They're like, what's happening here? We are in the last days. We are in the end times. And we need to really brace ourselves up, children of God, because the devil is really attacking the church. Yes. They will shut down the churches. Yet, the bars, the hotel, the name it, will be opened. All the entertainment places will be opened. You, you see, what is happening is a strategic um, attack on the church to shut the church up, to persecute the church. This is a systematic persecution of the church. And the Lord Jesus has told us this. He has uh, not put us in the dark. He has given us all this warning ahead. Like this is going to happen in the last days. There will be so much uh, hatred for you people. Because of my name's sake. You need to get ready. And the Lord also has said. There's going to be judgment because of wickedness. Yes. And so we need to be ready. There's still going to be more lawlessness. And that's why, by God's grace, I've come to encourage us through God's word that there is hope for us. Yes, while we wait for the coming of the Lord or we wait to uh, die in Christ, whatever may be the case, we need to continue to hold on to our faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, living in obedient life, living only life. His grace is sufficient for us in every situation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Grace in time of lawlessness. There's grace. Let's look at Matthew 24, 10 to 13. Amen. It says, 24, 10 to 13 says, and that, let me start from 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. See, 10, and then many will be offended. Hmm. We betrayed one another, and we ate one another. See what is happening. The Bible says many will be offended. Um, 11 says, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. See? And because of lawlessness, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Let me read that again. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Hmm. 
but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. That's verse 14. Let's study it on our own. Praise the Lord. This is the Lord Jesus Christ telling his disciples, preparing them, telling us that this is what is going to happen at the end of time. They're going to persecute you. Praise the Lord, especially we children of God. And the Bible says, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Hmm. Why will their love grow cold? Hmm. Because it is only somebody who has love, whose love is burning for the Lord. Yes, this love is the love for, for Jesus Christ, the love to, to, to serve the Lord, to follow Jesus, to obey the Lord, to serve the Lord. It's been burning all this while, and all of a sudden, things are just gradually growing lukewarm, then cold. Hmm. And you know that the Bible says, God hates lukewarmness. The, the Lord was um, warning the church uh, in Revelation, that was lukewarm, that they need to get up and uh, rise up and repent. Now the Bible is saying they're not only going to be lukewarm, they will be cold. That's dead. Hmm. This is falling away. My brothers and sisters, I pray the Lord will open our eyes. Is your love growing cold for the things of God? Is my love growing cold for the things of God? We need to quickly repent and get up. Begin to pray and ask for grace. Romans 5.20, the Bible says that where sins abound, grace abounds much more. Where sins abound, grace abounds much more. Let's ask for grace to be able to stand in this time of evil, of wickedness, of lawlessness, and let's shine in the power of the, the, of the Lord by the help of the Holy Spirit. Let our light shine in this dark world. Let our salt season all the tastelessness of this world. We shouldn't allow our love for the Lord to grow cold. The Bible says because uh, lawlessness we are banned, the love of many we grow cold. Why? Because when they see things around and they're like, God, where are you? What are you doing about this? And they seem to be thinking or feeling that, oh, God is not doing anything up there. They'll be wondering, is God really alive? Hmm. God is alive. <laughs> God is at work. Yes, he has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Yes, sometimes God might be silent and just to test our faith in him and see what is going to be our reactions. Praise the Lord. We need to be ready to face this time through the grace and the help of the Holy Spirit. Yes, like many are going to pass through so many persecution and tribulation and they'll be like, God, you should rapture us. You should take us out of this um, trouble, suffering. And if God is not doing that, if God is not delivering them from the prison, from, from being beaten, from being uh, um, uh, persecuted, you know, their faith will crash because they've not prepared themselves for this time. Praise the Lord. Let's look at so many examples in the scriptures. The apostles, they were beaten. They were thrown in the prison for so many times. And they will come out still uh, preaching the gospel. Remember the three Hebrew guys? Yes, in Babylon. The king said, you need to bow or I will throw you into the fire. But what did they say? <laughs> we know our God. He will deliver us. And even if God is not going to deliver us, we shall not bow. We won't bow. You can do your worst, king. That should be our attitude. 
this time we need to be ready when we pray to God to, to rescue us, whether he rescues us or not, God has a plan and is in charge, is in control. Praise the Lord. Yes. So we should be ready to die for our faith, no matter what. Whether God deliver us or not, he has the perfect plan for us. If it is his will for us to go through the tribulation and die during the persecution, during the suffering, to him be the glory. Yes. Stephen was torn to death. And even as he was dying, he was praying to God that the Lord will forgive those who were stoning him. Praise the Lord. And he saw heaven opened. Amen. So we should not uh, be cold. We should not be lukewarm at this time. Rather, we should seek God more. Study the scriptures more to know what God is saying about this time. Ask for grace. Grace every moment. Every second. Yes. We need the grace of God every day. And God to guide us, to lead us, to fill us with His Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit of God. Yes, let the Word of God abide in us. Every day, let's memorize the Word of God. We will need it. Yes. Because this time, hmm, we are in the time of lawlessness. And uh, there's still going to be worse things that will come. But God is assuring us that my grace is sufficient for you. I'll pour my grace on you. Praise the Lord. And uh, in Titus, let me read um, Romans 5.20. It says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Moreover, the law entered that of the offense might abound. But when sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Praise the Lord. 21. So that has sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life. See, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So even as sin reigns, yes, to death, sin reigns in death, sin is reigning, lawlessness is abounding, and to death, people that are walking in lawlessness, they are heading towards death. But the Bible says grace abounded much, much more for us, and even so, grace might reign through righteousness, so that we have grace to live righteous. We have grace to hold on to our faith. We have grace to still live holy life in this time. Yes. And this um, grace, it reign through righteousness for us to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Let me also read Titus 2, 11 to 12. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Yes, that's the word of God. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. So we have no excuse. We have no excuse. There's grace, abundant grace for us, even in the time of lawlessness. Yes, to live righteously, to live godly, to be sober, not to be carried away with worldliness, worldly drunkenness. Yes, things of this world. That's why we need to begin to deny ourselves, taking off our cross daily and following the Lord. Yes, begin to uh, abstain from sinful, worldly laws. And be serious with our relationship with the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have grace. You have to choose. What do you want? Lawlessness or godliness? We need to choose. It's a choice. The Lord is going to go. He's not, he's not going to force us. Do you want to live godly? The Bible says you, you will suffer persecution. And so you, will, you should be ready. We should be ready to endure to ask for grace to be able to live a righteous a holy a godly life in this time praise the lord so we have no excuse not to live a godly life even with all the lawlessness around us i pray the grace of god 
will continue to uphold us and open our hearts to this truth. Amen. Let's remember um, Lot during the time in Sodom and Gomorrah. There was lawlessness around Lot, but he endured. He was, he was the only one and his family that was rescued from all the from the judgment of God. So God's grace still avails for us today. Noah received favor from the Lord. Grace and favor. Yes. It was him alone with his family that was saved during the time of the flood. If they had grace during that time, how much more now? We have Jesus Christ. The grace of Jesus Christ has been promised to us. And the Lord said, grace will abound. So let's um, avail of ourselves of this grace. Humble ourselves before the Lord, repent of our sins, and continue to seek the Lord. This is the time we need to really trust God for everything. Mm -hmm. The righteous shall live by faith. Yes, for everything. Looking unto Jesus every day for everything we need, for direction, for guidance, for provision. Yes, because things are not normal anymore. Now we need to get closer to uh, the Word of God, be diligent in studying the Scripture, and memorizing the Scripture, and uh, prayer, fervent prayer, and fasting too. We need to, to do that more now, and be obedient to the commandments of Jesus Christ, to the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ, to love God with all our hearts, and ask Him to, 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 to help our love to be fervent for Him. To love our neighbors as ourselves and our enemies too. Let's ask that God will rekindle the fire of his love in our hearts. So that our love for God or his people will not grow cold. I pray that the grace of God will be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, please repent of your sins. Yes, believe that Jesus died for you. And uh, that God raised him from the dead. You'll be saved. And you need to be baptized by immersion. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. God bless you.